Eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices have many applications, including to data analysis, where they can be used to simplify and make sense of a multidimensional data set. This video will define eigenvalues and eigenvectors and explain how to compute them. Consider the 2 by 2 matrix given here and the 2 by 1 vectors u, v, and w. Please pause the video for a moment and compute a times u, a times v, and a times w and see if you notice anything interesting. To compute a times u, we need to multiply our matrix by the vector 1, 1. And the result is 1, 1. Now that's a little weird. We multiplied by this vector u and we got back the same vector u. In other words, a times u is equal to u. Let's see what happens when we do a times v. This time, we get an answer of 4, 2. So when we multiplied by v, we didn't get v back again, but we did get 2 times v because 4 is twice 2 and 2 is twice 1. So we have that a times v is twice v. Does that happen for all vectors? Let's try a times w. This time our answer, negative 5, negative 1, is not a multiple of the vector w that we started with. So u and v are special vectors for a in that they are stable under multiplication by a. We'll give them a special name. They're called eigenvectors for a. I'll explain what this means more precisely in the following definition. For an n by n square matrix a, suppose that there's a scalar lambda and a non-zero vector x such that a times x equals lambda times x. Then lambda is called an eigenvalue for a, and x is called an eigenvector. In the above example, we had that a times u was equal to u. I'll write that as a times u equals 1 times u. And we also had that a times v is equal to 2 times v. So 1 and 2 are eigenvalues for a, and u and v are the corresponding eigenvectors. I want to emphasize that in this definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we need the vector x, the eigenvector, to be non-zero. Lambda, the eigenvalue, can be zero or a non-zero number, but x cannot be the zero vector. If x were allowed to be the zero vector, that would kind of be like cheating because the zero vector is always going to work. If you multiply any matrix A by the zero vector, you get the zero vector. If you multiply any lambda by the zero vector, you get the zero vector. So that wouldn't be anything interesting. So does every matrix have eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Is there always some scalar lambda and some non-zero vector x such that AX equals lambda x? Well, if we allow for complex numbers as lambdas, numbers with i's in them as lambdas, then it turns out the answer is yes. But if we're only interested in real eigenvalues, as we will be in this class, then the answer is no. For example, consider this matrix B with entries 0, 1, negative 1, 0. If B did have an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, in other words, if there's some x vector such that b times x is lambda times x, then that would mean 0, 1, negative 1, 0 times, I'll write the components of x as x1, x2, would equal lambda times this vector with components x1, x2. Carrying out the multiplication on both sides of the equation, on the left side we get, let's see, this row times this column is just x2, and this row times the column is negative x1. So on the left side we get this vector, and on the right side we get lambda x1, lambda x2. So we would need to have x1, x2, and lambda satisfy the two equations x2 equals lambda x1 
and negative x1 equals lambda x2. If we substitute in lambda x1 from the first equation into x2 for the second equation, that gives us minus x1 equals lambda times lambda x1. In other words, minus x1 equals lambda squared times x1. So that means either x1 is 0, or if not, we can divide both sides by x1 and get lambda squared equals negative 1. Well, if we're just looking at real eigenvalues, real numbers for lambda, then x squared cannot equal negative 1. There's no real number that you, when you square it, you get a negative number. So x1 must equal 0, but then going back to this first equation, that means x2 is 0 also. So the only way to satisfy this equation is to use a 0 vector for x, but as we said before, the 0 vector doesn't count as an eigenvector. So in fact, there are no eigenvalues and eigenvectors that work for matrix B. But many matrices do have eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So how do we find them? Before we launch into finding them, I want to remind you of two facts about matrices. First of all, a matrix B is invertible if and only if the equation B times the vector x equals the zero vector has no other solutions than x equals the zero vector, which is always going to be a solution to an equation matrix times something equals zero. Since these two statements are equivalent, their negations are also equivalent. So b is not invertible if and only if bx equals zero does have other solutions than x equals zero. In other words, it has non-zero solutions. This is going to be relevant because when we're looking for eigenvectors, we're also looking for non-zero solutions to an equation. The second fact that I want you to recall is that B, a matrix B is invertible if and only if the determinant of B is not zero. Again, we could rewrite this equivalence by taking the negations. B is not invertible if and only if the determinant of B is equal to zero. Now let's see if we can figure out how we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a matrix A. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors correspond to scalars lambda and vectors x that satisfy this equation, ax equals lambda x. Let's rearrange this equation by bringing everything over to the left side. Now it's tempting to factor out the x and write something like this. But that wouldn't make sense because you can't take a matrix and subtract a scalar from it. So instead, I'm going to rewrite this equation as a times x minus lambda times i times x equals 0, where i is the identity matrix. This equation is the same as the one above it because i times x is the same thing as x. Now it makes sense to factor out the x and to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A, we want to find a lambda and a non-zero x that satisfy this equation. But fact one says having a non-zero solution to an equation of the form bx equals zero is equivalent to the matrix B being not invertible. So letting A minus lambda i play the role of B, finding a non-zero solution to this equation happens if and only if a minus lambda i is not invertible. Now let's look at fact two. Fact two says a matrix B is not invertible if and only its determinant is zero. So having this matrix A minus lambda i being not invertible is equivalent to the determinant of A minus lambda i equaling zero. So we'll be able to find eigenvectors, solutions to this equation, exactly for those values of lambda that make the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. 
Now we have a way to find the eigenvalues for A. What we have to do is set the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero and solve for lambda. Once we've found the eigenvalues lambda, we can find the eigenvectors by solving this equation for x. Let me show you how this works with an example. So let's find the eigenvalues for this matrix A. What we need to do is we need to figure out what lambdas will make A minus lambda I have a determinant of zero. I'm gonna write down A minus lambda I, so that's gonna be eight, three, two, seven, minus lambda times one, zero, zero, one. That needs to have a determinant of zero. I'll rewrite this as eight, three, two, seven, minus lambda, zero, zero, lambda. And I can also rewrite it as eight minus lambda, three, two, seven minus lambda, by subtracting these two matrices one entry at a time. So I need the determinant of this matrix to be zero. So that means eight minus lambda times seven minus lambda minus two times three needs to be zero. Distributing out, I get 56 minus eight lambda minus seven lambda plus lambda squared minus six equals zero. So lambda squared minus 15 lambda plus 50 equals zero. And that factors into lambda minus 10, lambda minus five equals zero. So my eigenvalues are lambda equals 10 and lambda equals five. Now let's find the eigenvectors. So first I'll consider lambda equals 10. Then I need to solve the equation a minus lambda i times x equals zero with lambda equals 10. So in other words, a minus 10 i times x equals zero. So let me write that out. So here's a and here's 10 i. I'll subtract my matrices. So eight minus 10 is minus two, three minus zero is three, two minus zero is two, seven minus 10 is minus three and I'll write my x in components. Now you might recall that solving an equation like this can be done by writing down the augmented matrix, augmented by the vector on the right side, and converting it to reduced row echelon form. I'm gonna do that by adding the first row to the second row, and then multiplying the first row by negative 1 half. Notice that I did not get the identity matrix when I reduced the matrix to reduce row echelon form, and that's good. That's what I expect, because I expect to get non-zero solutions to this e system of equations, and actually lots of them. So to find the solutions, I can set x2 to be a free variable, since there's no leading one in the x2 position, the x2 column, and then I have that x1 minus 3 halves x2 equals zero, and so x1 is 3 halves x2. So my solutions are of the form 3 halves x2, x2, or this can be written as x2 times 3 halves one. These are my eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda equals 10. And if I just wanted one eigenvector instead of a whole family of them, I could just pick an easy value of x2, like x2 equals one. So for example, the vector three halves one is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda equals 10. So we're halfway done. Now we need to do the same computation with lambda equals five. In other words, we need to solve the equation a minus five i times x equals zero. I encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own before seeing the solution. To solve this, I'll write down a minus five i and simplify a little. Eight minus five is three, three minus zero is three, two minus zero is two, seven minus five is two. And I can augment that 
with the zero vector and convert that to reduced row echelon form. I'm going to add the second row to the first row, put that in the first row's position. That gives me 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0. And then I'm going to add negative 2 times the first row to the second row. That gives me the matrix 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So once again, I've gotten in reduced row echelon form, and I don't have the identity matrix. I have x2 as a free variable, and I have x1 plus x2 equals 0, so x1 equals minus x2. So my solution eigenvectors are of the form minus x2, x2, or I can write that as x2 times minus 1, 1, and if I want an example, I can use minus 1, 1. In this video, we found the eigenvalues of a matrix A by setting determinant A minus lambda i equal to 0, and we found the corresponding eigenvectors by solving the equation A minus lambda i times the vector x equals the 0 vector. This expression, the determinant of A minus lambda i, is called the characteristic polynomial of A.